morning and welcome back to the more than cars youtube channel i made a little pop and bang it's really quite um enjoyable this little mini gp3 if i'm being completely honest where, especially when it unexpectedly makes a little pop and bang um off you go wifey or hopefully that uh that'll uh, catch it the little signet is off off and about See if we can follow her. Should be able to, that thing's rather slow. Um, anyway, in today's video, we're going to be talking about do supercar manufacturers make hypercars to basically make their brand exclusive. Now, hear me out, because this is a very interesting topic and I'm actually kind of relating to it. She's zooming off, isn't she? <laughs> oh, fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> might have had to have uh, beeped that bit out, but um, yes, um, yeah, do supercar manufacturers actually make hypercars to kind of be exclusive? Now, th this is an interesting topic because if any of you are Apple Mac lovers, you will probably, or might have even seen the videos, um, that basically Apple have produced, the, obviously, the MacBook, uh, not the MacBook, the, the big tower, the big, basically, PC that costs thousands and thousands of pounds. Now, don't get me wrong, I would absolutely love one of those, but quite honestly, I cannot justify it at all. And let's turn Stop Start off. Um, I really don't like stop starts. It's nice to actually hear that when you're wanting to go, you can go. But basically, my thought process behind this is Apple has produced um, basically some wheels. And I think they're $699 if you were to buy them separately, basically. So, I mean, that's first of all, for some metal wheels, that's absolutely ridiculous. But if we look at Apple's business model, they often produce really, 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 really high-end products, I think in an effort to still be unattainable to most. Now, th there's a logic behind why they would do this. They, they would do this because, quite honestly, they would be... <sighs> an exclusive brand still needs some exclusivity. They, do, they don't want to target the masses. However, quite clearly, Apple do want to target most people. That's why they've released, you know, the new iPhone, the, I think the SE model or, what, or whatever the low end iPhone is called, basically to compete with everybody. You know, that one is clearly attainable by most people looking to buy a smartphone. Whereas $699 for some metal wheels, on the other hand, no one in their right mind would buy that. Even from the practical sense of why would you need to wheel a PC around. So this got me thinking, are tech companies the only people who do this? Probably not. And then obviously we're a car channel, so the logical thought process, process was, do car manufacturers actually produce cars to entice people to buy them? Now, this is very possible. So I'm not talking about the Ferrari, Ferraris of the world because they've got a massive brand following anyway. However, they still do produce some hypercars. So the LaFerrari, it certainly got um, the attention of a lot of people. So this might actually help sell some of the lower end models to be able to, you know, for people wanting to get that LaFerrari feel or get into the brand. So this comes on to the obvious one of McLaren. Are they producing endless hypercar models to appeal to the attainable person? You know, supercars, yes, I appreciate they're extremely expensive, but with modern day finance, you know, I would have assumed there are a good, well, I'm not assuming, there are a good majority of people who nowadays can at least get into one of those cars you know, on reasonable earnings. It's not left entirely for the multi-millionaires, billionaires out there. It, for people on reasonable incomes, can actually obtain a supercar. Now, don't chuck into the comments that oh, I can't afford one. Yes, I appreciate there are still a, a huge mass majority that can't afford a supercar. However, please hear me out and listen to the context of the, the story. You know, are they doing this to have the vision of the multi-million pound hypercar to encourage that somebody who is looking to buy a supercar to actually pick, ah, you know, I'm going to get into McLaren. 
to uh, and make that look and judgment and the, that brand ethos of being completely exclusive. Now, I, I believe that's possible. I believe somewhere out there, somebody has had that marketing decision of actually it's a good idea to produce hypercars and at these stupidly expensive ends to make it more appealing and make more kind of media. There's all the pros and cons of why they would do this. They would, obviously, for the people actually buying those hypercars, it is mass income for the company in lump sums of money. And I imagine the profit margins on hypercars are significantly more than the general production sports or supercars. So there's, there's that big factor of why a company would actually make one of these things anyway. There's also the advertising that goes around it. So the, the even hype that goes around into when somebody announces the fact that there's a new hypercar out there and you know the whether it's good or bad or you know indifferent advertising, advertising is advertising at the end of the day. But I I really do think that they are sometimes doing this to in well, it's, it's advertising, isn't it? They do it for advertising, they do it to encourage people to buy it. But, you know, it, it really did hit me for the probably the first time when I was reading this article about Apple and producing these ridiculously expensive um, we, wheelable feet, um, that it is an effort to produce something that's really low volume, at a really high end of the spectrum. So people coming in the bottom feel they're part of a bigger and more exclusive brand. I want that to sink in for a second and really th think about companies manipulating the users, manipulating the vision, and I think it's interesting. I, I, I wanted to make this video because for me, I, I genuinely find that quite fascinating. The fact that this is a possibility. There's a com the companies out there producing products literally for the sake of it to actually encourage others to buy their low end products. And yes, okay, you know, we've likened it to McLaren with the Humpty and other different models that they've done in the hypercar spectrum. But, you know, we, we can look at Aston Martin. Are Aston Martin doing the same with the, the one I've even ordered? The, the you know the speedster the, the no roof car that is a complete impractical car but have they done it a for advertising b because they need the financial money or and c is it to make it more appealable for people wanting that kind of vision of the hypercar and exclusive brand i think it struck home are we being con as the general consumer, are we being conned into actually buying products that we don't need? And especially for somebody like me, who is into the car world and, you know, I mean, I was going to touch some wood, but the only wood here is probably between my uh, head, but uh, have I been conned into ordering one? Mm, maybe I'm in that bracket of idiot people who buy a car for no sense whatsoever don't know but it really did strike home that i found it really interesting that companies would produce something really for the sake of producing something and i find that absolutely fascinating the fact that the marketing and hype around something can encourage others a to buy it b others to buy products that are com completely unrelated and it's kind of free advertising for a company as well and in my head how can we as a general consumer actually help our little businesses by doing something similar can we produce something that is so unobtainable and you know i was looking i then went off into the art world are people producing art that is completely out there you know i, I mean i'm gonna liken this i found uh, a, literally a painting that was just black and it sold for some, I can't even remember now, sold for some absolute ridiculous figure. But is that happening just to make the hype around it? And, and I find that um, A, mind blowing, completely mind blowing and fascinating at the same time. I, I mean, obviously, please get in the comments, like what are your thoughts around some stupid things out there? Or 
you tell me what's the stupidest thing that's ridiculously priced that you've ever come across. And I don't mean something that's just ridiculously priced. Like, okay, I mean, a, a hyper yacht or a super yacht is ridiculously priced and completely unobtainable, but you know, there's a justifiable means why that is so expensive. So, <laughs> you know, tag the most stupid, expensive thing you can possibly find because my mind was blown when I was reading this article about Apple and kind of being able to relate this to things that I've purchased myself really did start to make me think whether we as the general public are completely manipulated. Um, so yeah, do you agree with me? Do you agree that the general public are absolutely manipulated into buying things that are completely unnecessarily just for marketing sense. So there you go, that was my little brainwave this morning when I was sat in bed reading the article, but I find it interesting. I really do find it interesting and you know how relatable that that is to all sorts of different industries. I, I, I think it's interesting and I think the next step for me is how we can relate this to things that we implement in our own businesses because you know we are not the fortune 500 companies out there we are small individuals making our own lives and how we can help ourselves to to gain marketing presence is this something that we could do to kind of help market our businesses i don't know this is this is my thought for today to be honest anyway as always guys that's probably enough drivel for this morning i'm really interested in your thoughts this was a, a kind of light bulb moment for me this morning but anyway thank you ever so much for watching please stay safe please take care i've got some really exciting uh, stuff coming in the next couple of days with uh, the fact that uh, lockdown's been lifted enough that we are allowed to drive to some places that aren't just for exercise but uh, yeah some exciting content to come so uh, thank you ever so much for watching i'll see you again soon well tomorrow for another driveling video bye bye guys take care